So let's talk about performance and hydration. Now, most people suggest that you hydrate with plain water or a salt solution that matches the saltiness of sweat to actually consume during exercise. But in fact, that's actually not the best way to hydrate. The best way to actually hydrate is to actually consume sodium and water before exercise. Essentially, you preload with salt and water to actually get ahead of the problem. And the problem with high intensity exercise is that there is a drop in blood volume of about eight to 10% after just 10 to 15 minutes of vigorous exercise. Now, what this ends up doing is it drops cardiac output and it increases heart rate and this reduces performance. So you need to be consuming something that is actually going to prevent this drop in blood volume. And consuming just plain water or even a solution that is as salty as your sweat is not enough to actually boost blood volume. So what the studies actually show, and this is where I'm getting this equation from, is multiple studies have looked at actually preloading with salt and water, and they've ranged from 2,300 milligrams to 4,300 milligrams of sodium. And what they've done respectively is they've used 22 ounces of fluid for the 2,300 milligrams, all the way up to 33.8 ounces, which is one liter of fluid in 4,300 milligrams, uh, with 4,300 milligrams of sodium. And how these studies preload with salt and water is you start drinking them 90 to 105 minutes prior to exercise. And it's this slow infusion of <clears throat> sodium and water that actually slowly boosts in blood volume. And you slowly drink these solutions over 30 to 60 minutes, again, starting at 90 to 105 minutes prior to exercise. Now, if you add glycine instead of glucose, this is actually uh, also a better way to boost not only the absorption of the sodium in the water, but glycine also reduces core body temperature. It is, it, it is an amino acid, but it's also an inhibitory neurotransmitter. And that's actually how it works to improve sleep is it actually reduces core body temperature. So not only will this increase the absorption of the sodium in the water and reduce the risk of diarrhea, but it's also going to lower core body temperature even more. The other potential benefit with glycine is that the acetic acid in pickle juice is thought to actually inhibit cramps due to the release of glycine. So consuming pickle juice essentially in two studies has been shown to inhibit skeletal muscle cramps within 90 seconds, and it's thought to be due to the release of glycine. Now, the studies that have looked at this type of preloading with salt and water, there's been many looking at people who vigorously exercise in the heat, who vigorously exercise at normal temperatures, who do moderate exercise in the heat. And so the studies that have looked at people vigorously exercising in the heat have shown that this type of preloading with salt and water increases exercise duration by over 20 minutes. So essentially people were cycling uh, for 40 minutes, but if they consumed this and preloaded with salt and water, they were able to actually cycle vigorously for over 60 minutes. And it led to a core body temperature three quarters of a degree Fahrenheit less and a heart rate nine to 10 beats per minute less. Now, there's been some uh, posts going around uh, basically looking at this type of equation. Some people are calling it the Galpin equation. It's where you take body weight, divide it by 30, and that's supposedly the amount of ounces of water that you should consume every 15 minutes. Now, there's positives and negatives to this equation. So if it's vigorous performance, this equation will actually reduce performance by about 2.5%. So this is not what you want to do if you are performing vigorous exercise. Essentially, exercising at greater than 70% VO2 max. If you're doing moderate intensity, let's say cycling, the Galpin equation is essentially at the lower end of these two equations. And these two equations have been shown to improve performance. So if you're doing moderate intensity cycling for over an hour to less than two hours or over two hours, 
uh, this type of fluid consumption, 0.15 to 0.2 mLs per kilogram body weight per minute, can increase performance by 2%, and this equation can do that by about 3%. So we need to select equations based on the actual exercise intensity. But what's really cool about this equation, uh, preloading with sodium and water, is that what the studies show is when you actually do this, uh, after you start exercising, um, basically the need for water dramatically decreases. Um, basically, the studies sometimes don't even give them water for up to two hours after they've preloaded with salt and water because you're getting ahead of the problem. Um, I personally think that if you do this type of solution, it's probably not a bad idea to consume a little bit of water if your mouth gets dry. Um, but certainly you do not need uh, something like the Galpin equation, which would be like five ounces of water every 15 minutes. I hope this video was helpful on the optimal way to take salt and water prior to exercise to boost performance.